this video I'm going to show you how you can set up a remote lesson for your class. We're going to go through the best practices and the different options available to you. So I'm logged into Microsoft Teams. I can see all of the classes that I teach and if I wanted to I can click on one of those classes and I can go to the the post channel where I can see all the conversations, previously recorded lessons. However, the best way to set up your remote virtual lesson is to go to the calendar and to create a meeting within the calendar. So find the date and time of your proposed lesson, click on the calendar and give it a title. Now we don't need to add attendees because what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the channel of the team that we're going to be teaching. So I'm going to select my English Year 11 class and I'm going to put it in the general channel of that team. That's going to invite all the students within that group. I can set a start time and an end time for this lesson. So I'm going to make it an hour, 1 p.m. till 2 p.m. If I want to, I can also add some extra details in here as well. I then press send and this will send an invitation out to every student's email. So they'll know exactly when this lesson's going to happen. If they click accept, it will also add it to their personal Outlook calendar as well. Now, one thing that you might want to set up is some restrictions on what students can do in the meeting. And the best way of doing that is just wait until this meeting has finished setting up. It might take a couple of minutes. When it's finished setting up, it'll look something like this. And if we click on that lesson again, we now get additional options. And one of those is meeting options. If you click on meeting options, that will open a web page and you'll be able to decide who can present in the session. So if, there's, if this is not going to be interactive where students are presenting their own screens then you can restrict it so only you can share your screen and then press save to save those changes. You can then close the window and go back into Teams. So now when we're ready to start that lesson and join it we can click on it in our calendar and press join. You can decide if you have your video turned on and your audio and if we click on the people icon here to show the participants we can see all the people in the class and we can see if they've joined the session or not. As soon as people join we'll be able to see them appear in this list. Now I've had some students join the session but they are not muted so I can use the mute all button here which will mute everybody except for me in the meeting. If anyone hasn't joined yet, I can always ask them to join. And if they've got the app open, it will start dialing them into the meeting. If a student has any questions, they can always unmute themselves to ask those questions and then you can mute everybody again. The first four people that join the lesson will be unmuted and then everybody who joins after that will automatically be muted. So you should only have to press mute or once as people are joining the session. If you want to use this lesson again for revision purposes or for students who can't make this lesson today, then you might want to record the session. And to do that, you go to more actions and start recording. This will record the lesson and it will show a recording of the lesson using Microsoft Stream in the general channel of that team for future reference. There's lots of great things you can do in Teams besides obviously sharing your webcam. We can also share our screen as well. So we can present things like PowerPoints. We can share our screen to show what we are writing on our device. And this is really powerful when you're presenting to students. So you just choose which screen you want to share or which application, select it, and the students will be able to see exactly what you share on your screen. If we want to message people within the team, maybe you want to notify them that the lesson is about to start, you can click show conversation. And if you know the name of the group, you can use the at symbol 
and I can type in the name of the group or, or the class to mention them. The lesson is about to start. That means if students have the app open, they will get an instant notification on their phone or tablet if they've got the app installed. If you've muted students in your class, then they won't be able to take part in this conversation chat. So before you do start your virtual lessons, check out our, our other videos on muting students within the class using the conversations, and that will stop them from being able to post in this uh, group chat without um, you are muting them first. When you're ready to end the lesson, you're probably going to want to remove the students first. So some of them may leave themselves, or if you need to, you can remove the participants so that you're the last person in the meeting. And then when you end the meeting, when you hang up, that will finish the session and it will start compiling the recording, which you can then watch later. If you want to check the attendance of the lesson, you can see the different people that were part of that group conversation, that virtual lesson. You'll see them as the little icons here next to the meeting.